Hey guys, I'm Pseudoscript, and I'm pretty excited to show you a couple of projects that I've been working on that build on top of uh, Politera. Uh, I think Politera is one of the most exciting projects in crypto right now. Uh, it doesn't just let us uh, experiment with governance models within crypto, but also with governance outside of crypto and like other types of things, such as uh, social media. So one of the projects I've been working on I call Democratic Reddit, or Decredit, which is a uh, twist on social media that I think brings some of the power back to users. So um, all of you are familiar with the way that social media works, media works today. Um, to highlight, I think, one of its problems, uh, we can pick a community that some of you may be familiar with, which is the Bitcoin community, r slash Bitcoin, on Reddit, um, which is known for uh, having some degree of censorship and moderation. And so we have a user here who has posted a pretty innocuous question, a new user, um, asking how r slash Bitcoin is different than r slash BTC which is the subreddit for Bitcoin Cash uh, supporters. Now, they probably didn't know that there was a blood feud between the two of these uh, groups, and so by posting that question on r slash Bitcoin, they ended up getting their post banned uh, and themselves banned as well. <laughs> and this is not uncommon. Um, you know, there's a whole subreddit of people that have been banned from r slash Bitcoin where they congregate and commiserate. Um, and it's not a problem, but this is not a problem just with Bitcoin or with Reddit. It's a problem with all social media platforms currently, Twitter and Facebook included. Uh, the problem is that social media is currently a dictatorship of admins and moderators. So users that do get censored, um, they don't have any recourse against it. They can't prove that they've been censored and they can't take any action. And that's just the way it works right now. If you post some content and you piss somebody off who has power and permissions in that community, uh, you can get censored. And if you do get censored, uh, most you can do is go complain to people. But with Politera, that doesn't have to be the case. If you get censored, um, the first thing you can do is that you can prove that you've been censored. And that's because Politera provides a cryptographically secure censorship token for anything that's submitted to it. Now, because you can prove that you've been censored, you can actually go ask other members of your community whether they think that censorship was valid or not valid. You could call a referendum on it. And if, you, if your referendum passes, if you get enough members of your community to agree that that censorship was not appropriate, uh, you as a group of users can overturn the censorship of the moderators and take back some of, that, uh, some of that power. So maybe the best way to see how this works is with a little demo. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start my local Politea server right there. Um, I've set up a couple of aliases. Uh, that might help with this, and so there I'm just going to be able to send uh, commands to my the local instance of Palate I just started, and this is going to help me also send commands, but as an admin to do admin -y things like sensor post. So let's say I'm a user on this forum, which is backed by Palate, and I'm pretty upset with the way things have been going. So I decide to write a post, and I say, mods are not gods. We need new moderators. Let me just save that to a file. So, um, yeah, this is a pretty uh, incendiary post, but I'm going to make it anyway. So I'm going to submit that. There we go. The record has been submitted. And this is the uh, you know, censorship token that I got back. So I'm just going to save that to a variable so I don't have to keep typing it. And uh, now you can see that it is... Um, publicly available. Uh, this is a little different. You can see the status is public. This is a little different than the way that Politea currently works. Um, and this is because it's this model is kind of the way social media works, where anything that somebody posts is immediately public. Uh, but of course, as soon as an admin sees this, uh, they're going to say, hey, we can't allow that kind of talk in here. And they're going to come in and censor that post. And there it goes. It's not public anymore. No one can see it. Um, and if this was normal social media, then that would be the end of the road. Like, nothing you can do. But because uh, this is backed by Politera, um, I can actually go see whether I've been censored. Um, and there it is. There's my post, same token, same file digest as above. And uh, you can see that the status is censored. Um, and so anyone can see this. Other users can see this as well. And so I decide that, hey, as the author, I'm going to hold a referendum on that censorship. I don't think it was appropriate. Um, and you can see I'm passing in an ID file here. 
And the reason I'm doing that is because I uh, am going to sign my request to hold this referendum. Um, and you'll see that users who vote also sign their votes as well. And that way the server is able to keep track of uh, votes according to people's um, uh, public keys. So there, there we go. The referendum has been initiated on this proposal. Um, and other users who come in and decide to get the status, they'll see that the status is actually a referendum now. And they can go ahead and start voting. And so let's have user 1 go ahead and vote. They can vote to either reverse or uphold the censorship. And this user decides, hey, I'm going to reverse it. Because I don't think that, that we can't ban that kind of talk here. Um, great, that, that vote was cast. Let's cast a couple more. Uh, user 2 decides that it was absolutely fine for the moderators to do that. And user three here decides, no, I agree, I agree, like we should not uh, censor that kind of post. And this can keep going on for as long as the referendum lasts. Um, in this case, I'll just have it running for a couple of minutes. But uh, down here, you can see that uh, the server has been printing a map of people's public keys uh, to the votes that they've been casting. And that's how it keeps track of this. So here's the, here's the author here. Uh, and I know that because they have a zero vote, uh, they have a no vote, the person initiating the referendum doesn't get to vote. But then other users have a negative one, which is uh, re uh, upholding the censorship, and a one to reverse the censorship. So at this point, the referendum's over, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the results. Uh, and what this will do is tabulate and calculate the votes, uh, store them, and then also take any kind of action uh, necessary um, according to the rules of this referenda. The rules of this one are very simple. It's just a 51% uh, vote, so whoever has more votes uh, wins. So there you go. There's two people who voted to reverse the censorship and one person that voted to uphold it. Um, and now, if we go and say, like, is that post visible? We see that it is, and uh, there it is back in the in the public repo. It's uh, same token, same file digest, and its status is not just public, but public final. And what this means is that um, if an admin comes around and decides, hey, you know, I'm censored it once, I'm going to censor it again until they get the message, well, it turns out that they can't. You can't go from a post that's uh, been overturned as censorship to, um, to, to censoring it again. It's kind of like a, a, you know, a veto or something. All right, so let me explain some of the things I had to change uh, in the back end to uh, make this work with the Politeia framework. Uh, the first thing you probably noticed is that the post got uh, published immediately and uh, didn't wait in some kind of unvetted queue for uh, action. And that's because that's just the way social media works. Um, it was published through a single commit. Um, and... Uh, uh, that, the reason that's important is because when we went, to, when the admin went to censor it, the way censorship works is by reverting that commit that published it uh, on the master uh, branch in the public repo. So that means it's no longer available in the public repo. It is still available in the censored repo so that people can go and see the posts that have been censored. Um, and then after the referendum is held, if um, there needs to be action that's taken against it, it can be overturned by reverting that revert. And so, um, and then changing the status to being public final, like you saw. And we can, we can see this, actually, if we peek under the hood um, and go into the public repo and look at the git log. We can see uh, right there, we published uh, that post, and there it was censored. And so this, this commit or reverted that commit. And then after the referendum, the censorship was overturned. So this commit reverted that commit. And we updated the status to be published uh, public final. Um, the logic and the way the referendum works is in a new package uh, I made called the referendum package. And here's a snippet of uh, how referendums get created. A uh, user submits a request uh, the, to hold a referendum on this record. And at this point, we have verified that the user assigned the token on the request. And we have verified that the public identity that they've, uh, the public key that they've shared with us um, you know, it corresponds to the signature, and so they hold the pu private key that corresponds to this public key. We can, we can trust that they are who they say they are. We uh, create a referendum on that token. We also make a map of public keys to votes to keep track of who's voting how. Um, for the purposes of this uh, proof of concept, we just save that referendum in a, 
in a map of uh, referendums. And me, longer term, we may want to put this in like some kind of more uh, durable or permanent storage. And then, of course, we set the calling user, the user that's calling the referendum, we just cast their vote as a null vote. Um, and we set the status as referendum. And so when other users vote, we kind of get, we get their public key as well, we cast their vote, and that lets us keep track of uh, what you saw earlier. So that's it. Uh, if you want to see the rest of the code, you can go to pseudoscript slash on GitHub and check out the decredit branch. Thanks, guys.